and we're going to summarize this uh, symposium uh, about uh, laser and uh, laser surgery. Perfect. So th the main problem is we need to choose what's the treatment of glaucoma. And we need to decide when to do laser. As you know, there is a lot of parameters that we need to take into account to treat patients. And it was summarized in these slides. We need to choose with family history, general disease, life expectancy, IOP values, corneal thickness, cornioscopy, uh, to see if there are some pigment dispersion to the exfoliation. If we look at the optic nerve with the disc size and the visual field damage and the progression rate. And the main problem is not to arrive too late after the laser. As we know, you have a lot of mechanism technique in snake surgery, and it's not the purpose of the symposium. And uh, before, when we are uh, treating patients with the primary open angle glaucoma, which usually uh, first start with medical therapy and then to do laser and then to do surgery. But now, as we explained to you in the symposium, we have other one line that we can choose first by laser or other surgery. So there is a before and an after. Before we add drops, add drops, add drops until inflammatory conjunctiva with a very high risk of failure of surgery. And also as uh, Mark Latina explained to us, a risk of failure of SLT. And now, we are going to choose laser before as first line therapy or to avoid uh, medical treatments and preservative. And we know that if we use preservative drops, we have poor surger, uh, surgical results. So we need to change and to start probably first by SLT or not too late in the history. So in the first choice treatment, we have a lot of parameters to decide as mechanisms of action, target IOP, cost, quality of life, endurance, clinical picture, et cetera, et cetera. But we not to do this story, wait, 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 until very poor vision to say, oh, we're going to refer this patient to a glaucoma specialist. And there are too many patients with poor vision and refer too late. It's the same story with the cyclodestriction, because cyclodestriction was restricted to refractory glaucoma uh, before with uh, side effects, as we know, with high IOP, uveitis, and very uh, heavy complications. And as we present to you, we are now good result with subcyclo, with 24% UT cycle, and very very good result that we present to you uh, uh, at this symposium with a good IOP reduction and no significant complication. So we are now a subcyclo. It's a safe procedure with few complications, low rate of vision loss of the time. It's a very good efficacy proven through all the clinical studies that we present to you at this symposium and with good efficiency and it is fast and easy treatment and repeatable if necessary without complication. So if we summarize with these slides, we need to change our paradigm. As you know, we had the concept of minimally invasive glaucoma surgery, but we can not probably ask now and tell about minimally invasive laser treatments. Why not mixed and milled? Hmm. As you know, we have um, uh, medical treatments who are with um, production of aqueous humor with alpha 2 agonies, beta blockers, and carbonic hydras inhibitors, and now with subcyclo laser. Uh, action of overscore alpha with the prostar family and well known with alpha 2 agonists, but also FWNC is now with subcyclo laser. And on trabecular outflow with SLT. And why not in the future as we combine medical treatments? with acute remote predictions uh, and uveal scleral or trabecular outflow, not in the future to have a minimally invasive lizard treatments combining subcyclo and SLT to avoid severe complications. Could be an option probably in the future, 
you have this complex of melt rather than mix. So it was a great symposium and I would like to thank a lot all our speakers and uh, we learned a lot about the new laser treatments and we probably how to change our paradigm with laser treatment. Thank you all of you for this fantastic presentation and thank you again.